If you don't use these skills in the IELTS, it will be highly unlikely that you'll get through the material in the prescribed time. The following are some very important points for you to remember and practice if you want to get a good score for your reading. First, use the titles and any subtitles to try to predict the article's general content. Even if your prediction isn't correct, trying to predict will help you to focus on the exercise. This will calm your nerves and allow you to think clearly. Write down whether you think the tone of the article is positive, negative or neutral. Also, quickly brainstorm some ideas by writing down two or three words that come into your head on the topic being considered. In the case of the article in your notes entitled Talk About the Weather, Forces That Govern Climate, you could have written negative, storms, global warming and melt. This shouldn't take you more than a minute, so please do it. It's a very important step. Second, another reading skill which you need to develop is skimming. This is done to get a general idea about the contents of an article. We skim for global information. The quickest, easiest and most beneficial way to do this is to go straight to the questions. The questions really consist of a summary of the text. Next, look carefully at any graphs, tables or diagrams which may accompany the article since they contain large amounts of condensed information. Third, scanning is the next step. You'll now be looking for specific information. There are clue words in each question. For example, question three in the sample test in your notes asks the question, where was the first outbreak of Asian hemorrhagic fever recognized? So the clue words are where, a place, hemorrhagic fever, and outbreak. The clue words can be found around line 65. The answer is Manila. Fourth, guessing the meaning of words is another skill you'll have to develop. Remember, it's possible to get a high score for the reading subtest without understanding all the words in the text. You'll often be able to give the right answer even though you don't know the meaning of a word by merely understanding its function in the sentence. Is it a noun, a verb, an adverb or an adjective? For example, in the article A Global Village But Still Divided, line 8, there's the word chartered. Although most students wouldn't know the meaning of this word, it can be guessed. In the context of the sentence, chartered must be a verb, something explorers did. They did it around the planet. They found out something by doing it. Now, if you had to answer the question, what did explorers not find when they charted the planet? You'd be able to give the answer, mouthless apple eaters, dog-headed people. This brings us to point number five, referencing. Often words refer to a word from a previous phrase. For example, the article about the weather states this process is often compared to a greenhouse. The sentence before tells us what this process is. There's the statement, this is just the right amount to produce a climate in which life can flourish. This refers to one billionth of the sun's outgoing energy. Finally, it's very important that you transfer all your answers to the answer sheet. 
If your answers aren't on the answer sheet, they won't be marked and you may lose valuable points. The writing module takes 60 minutes and there are two tasks to complete. For task one, candidates need to write at least 150 words in no more than 20 minutes. Candidates have to present information from a graph, diagram or table in their own words. For task two, candidates need to write at least 250 words in no more than 40 minutes. Candidates have to present their point of view, develop an argument or propose solutions to a problem. A common problem facing students doing the writing test is that they have difficulty understanding graphic information. For this reason, they often spend too long on task one. It may be better to start with task two, since it carries more marks. Whichever task you do first, remember to stick to the time allotted to each task. To prepare for the test, try to collect graphs from books, magazines, the newspaper, and use the method presented here to practice analysing them. Your success in doing this task will depend on understanding graphic information, using the correct language which you'll find in the notes, using the right method which will be discussed on the video, and practice. This is very important and it's up to you. To analyse a graph. Step 1. Divide the graph into sections. Each section on the graph represents a sentence. This graph has four sections, so the body of your answer will have four sentences. This graph has five sections, so the body of your answer will have five sentences. Step 2. Use a highlight pen to mark the highest and lowest points on the graph. This will remind you to use phrases such as reached the highest peak of or rose to an all-time high of or perhaps dropped to the lowest level of or fell to an all-time low of. Please turn to your notes for further information on how to use these phrases. Step 3.